Shelley Avenue in Elizabeth, New Jersey, on the street where I grew up. In those days, Judy Bloom was a girl who never dreamed that she would become a pioneering author, writing groundbreaking books for and about adolescents struggling to make sense of everything from puberty to budding sexual desire. That's my son, Poller. That's where I used to make out when I was a teenager. <laughs> I was interested in puberty long before it happened to me. I was late. I was a late developer. I'm still waiting. <laughs> in fact, she says she felt compelled to write about subjects that had often been taboo. I wanted to be honest. And I felt that, you know, no adult had been honest with me. We didn't have the information that we should have had. But now she is interested in another aspect of her youth, real events that unfolded right here in Elizabeth, New Jersey, when she was just 13. You know, it must have been buried so deep inside me because I lived through it, and three planes fell out of the sky in 58 days. That's right, three horrifying plane crashes all in and out of neighboring Newark Airport. From December 1951... Balls of flame mushroomed over the entire area. It was almost indescribable scene. ...through February 1952. More than 100 people were killed in all. Later, federal authorities would determine logical explanations for each crash. But in the beginning, Elizabeth was a terrified and confused town. I remember the smart girls, and I wanted to be part of the smart girls, said it's sabotage. The boys, on the other hand, were into uh, flying saucers and aliens and zombies, you know. Some people thought it was the Russians, too, the because it was the Cold War. The communists, right? yes, they did. Nobody, you know, when you're scared like that, when something crazy is happening, you feel better um, coming up with an explanation. Bloom's new book is a fictionalized account of the impact of the crashes on Elizabeth. Though aimed at adults, it still touches on some of Bloom's profound and familiar themes of youthful anxiety, including a young girl's questions about how God could let such terrible things happen. And her mother says to her, well, it's not God's job to decide what happens. It's his job to help you through it. And then, of course, her mother goes off and thinks to herself, if only I believed that. If only that were the way it really worked. But she says, what was I supposed to tell my daughter when she asked me if I believed in God? Judy Bloom was born in 1938, the daughter of a dentist and a homemaker. She studied to become a teacher, but there was another agenda, too. You married while you were still in college. I did. I mean, that was my job, too. Go to college and get a degree and meet someone while you're there. This was my mother talking. Soon she had two children, but needing a creative outlet, began trying to get her books published. Did you get a lot of rejections at first? Yes. Two years. Two which years isn't that bad when you think about it. I cried the first time, <laughs> and then I didn't, because determination is what gets you through. She broke through in 1969. Now, with more than 80 million books sold and several generations of devoted fans... I love your books. Your books affect me so much. I remember sitting under the covers and reading them at night. Bloom spends most of her time in Key West, with her third husband, retired attorney George Cooper. They were set up when she lived briefly in New Mexico. We got together for dinner one night, and two days later I was living in the house, and that was 35 years ago. But Bloom's life has not been a fairy tale. The 1980s brought attempts to ban her books from some schools because of frank depictions of teenage sex and other controversial issues in works like Forever. The idea was, uh, I don't want my child to read this book, therefore no child should be able to read this book. She battled back. But then in 2012, another struggle, 
this time with breast cancer. Now, after a mastectomy and reconstructive surgery, she can even joke about it. I've got one nipple that points that way and <laughs> one nipple that points this way, but it's mine. <laughs> and I'm fine, and I'm fine with it. So what do you love about Key West? Uh, how can you not love a I place know. like this? <laughs> In fact, at age 77, Judy Bloom says if there's one thing her books, especially her latest, have taught her, it's the lesson of human resilience. There's joy in life even after terrible things happen. Terrible things do happen. We can't predict when or what, but we're humans and we go on.